This nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. When the president said we're going to go to the moon, that really floored me. I really thought it was beyond our scope. The team of people that we had were, didn't quite feel that way. I think they were excited as hell about it. And so I became excited about it as, as a result of that. Well, if you look at the impact of the what's now called the Apollo 1 fire, that was uh, January of 1967. That meant there were only two more years in the decade to land a man on the moon. And after the Apollo 1 fire, we took 21 months with no flying. 21 months out of the remaining time. So I think the Apollo 1 fire created the opportunity to get it done because of all the changes that went on. Let me talk a little bit about, about Apollo 8. Gutsiest thing we have ever done in manned space flight. Huge risk, huge risk. Gutsy. The most important Apollo flight ever, because it set us onto the goal to, uh, to do what President Kennedy wanted us to do. The recovery people started talking to the, the DOD people about uh, the Navy support we're going to require in the Pacific. General Houston says, I'm not about to go ask uh, Admiral McCain. They, I know that they've already planned to have that time off. And he said, so I'm not gonna go ask Admiral McCain to break that consistency. You're gonna have to do that. I said, bring me an airplane, we'll both go. So that's what we did. The Admiral came in, everybody jumped to attention, including me. And he said, okay, young man, what do you got to say? So I gave him this 15 minute briefing of what we wanted to do, why we were going to the moon, what it meant to the country, and, uh, but I need your ships. He banged his hand down on his fist and said, that's the best goddamn briefing I've ever heard. Give this young man anything he wants. We walked out go up and, and orbit the moon. That was a biggie. That was the biggie. That was our design mission, if you want to call it that. Three, two, one, zero. We have commit. We have, we have liftoff. Liftoff at 751. Firing of the command module engine to put the vehicle into orbit the first time took place, of course, on the backside of the moon, because that's the most efficient place to do it. When you did that, that meant you'd be around the moon for 30 minutes. So we got to the moon and we hit the time when we were gonna lose communications with the spacecraft on the second. And that gave us pretty good confidence that we were in the right orbit, the right place. At that point, we went or behind the moon. We were actually on a trajectory where if we didn't do anything, it would come back around the other side of the moon and be on trajectory to come back to the Earth. And so when that thing came around to the next side, I, I did a lot of praying for 30 minutes. Thank God it's going to come out of the other side of the moon. And it did. We've got it. Uh, we've got it. Apollo uh, 8 now in... In lunar orbit, uh, there's a cheer in the, this room. Now approaching uh, lunar sunrise, and uh, for all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. You guys read the Bible verses on Christmas Eve, and because I'm right there working along with uh, thousands of other people, but that just—I mean—I got goosebumps. It just lasted. I still get goosebumps when I when I reminisce about uh, the reading of, of those words. Oh, well, that's the one that really got everybody. Uh, I think brought, brought tears to everybody's eyes. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. When those guys signed off on that, it was it was just, hey man, this is the best Christmas ever. You know, you <laughs> you, you you go home and and, and uh, really have a, a great time. So uh, nifty, very nifty. But it was the second time we when we were coming back to the earth. The level said, uh, "Please be informed, there is a Santa Claus." You know, the highlight had to be probably the burn headed home when they came around on time, and so we knew they'd made the burn, and and they were headed home. You could relax a little then, I guess. I mean, we still had to go through entry and everything, but uh, but you could relax. And what a wonderful thing to happen in 1968 during those times. I mean, it, it, talk about at the at the end of the year, uh, it, it it Hollywood couldn't make a make a movie any better than that, in my opinion. Pain who then became the acting administrator, came in at one of our meetings one day, he says, I want to talk to you guys. He said, I am extremely proud of you people that you have been willing to come up with this change in plan to take advantage of what you have to do to get the program back on track. And well, I congratulate you for having done that. Well, that was a, one of the best things anybody's ever said to me. We were having a discussion the other day at my company. I said something about Apollo being the golden age of space exploration. And one of the younger guys looked at me and said, today is the golden age of space exploration. And you know, he may be right. Calculating risk um, today is a much more uh, scientific, restricted sort of process to go through. Interesting because it makes you wonder if you, if you took the same process today and put it back into the Apollo 8 time frame, would we have actually done Apollo 8? And I'm not so sure. I really do think it's important to establish a permanent outpost on the moon and really start moving into space as a species, as, a, as humanity moves into space. Not just a few explorers, but the colonists. To expect a president to make a Kennedy-ass speech and Congress to fall in line and give almost unlimited amount of money, probably not gonna ever happen again that same way. That's not to say we shouldn't go forward and that space exploration won't happen. A low Earth orbit has a lot of business opportunity. People can run businesses and make money. And frankly, these commercial firms, if they can provide a transportation service at lower cost, with regularity, with a good safety record, then it will open up all kinds of industries in space. And then the government can buy a ride, just like we go down to the airline counter and buy a ticket on the airline today. That would be a good thing. It will allow NASA to move away from the low Earth orbit phase and go back to the cutting edge, really hard, really exotic things that the agency needs to do. I am really amazed at what, what SpaceX has done. I don't try to make apples to apples comparison. I know what the Orion team is doing. I don't worry too much about competition between the commercial world and the Orion program. We might be seeing the kind of things that happened in aviation in the 20s. We've got this explosion of designs and companies and creativity that build this great infrastructure.